Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Creative Blockman podcast. Today is going to be, this episode basically is going to be part of the the series that, or what I've called it, in, well, the name of the series is going to be The Arts of Things. So how The Arts of Things came about was one day I was just thinking to myself that not that everything is art. It might sound very cliche, like, Ooh, everything is art. Like we are surrounded by art. Like I don't want to be a hipster. Yeah, a little hipster. <laughs> um, but it's kind of true if you think about it. As you drive around and as we we like just experience our everyday life, we kind of surrounded by art. And I think there's a lot of people that don't really acknowledge it and see it. Yeah. So, and then it came to me. I was like, okay, cool. There's like there's so many people that are actually artists but they might not even realize it and it's a pity yeah, yeah. It's, it's really a pity I, I think it's a pity so then it, it came to me i was like okay one architect barber this that like these people are artists yeah um so that's how it came about so welcome everyone to the first episode of art of things and on today's episode we have an architect um so the man sitting next to me is nikki from footprints architecture and design and I am going to now pass it over to him and let him tell you guys a little bit more about Footprint and yeah, go for it. Cool. Well, thanks for having me on. Hopefully um, it's a cool little series and everyone enjoys it. Um, from our side, we obviously an architectural practice. You've got some firsthand experience from it. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've been in the industry I've been practicing for over 10 years. I've had my own um, firm or practice for seven years now. Actually, seven years this month, I think. Oh, nice. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Seven and years old. Lucky seven, number seven. Yes, you, uh, <laughs> I turned a few digits older than that a few weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> I'll take the seven. Um, yeah, so we just focused. I've always enjoyed designing on the residential, residential side. So we focus primarily on the residential market, um, relatively on the high end to the lux level. And yeah, it's been cool, like uh, challenging, especially with COVID and everything that's happened. Like no, yeah. one, no one's really putting money aside to start building new houses, but uh, we got through it. And uh, since then it's actually been pretty okay. No, oh, that's good. I mean, like you said, I have some firsthand experience and not because I have firsthand experience, but Nikki really is talented and the people that he, that they work, he works with are really talented. And it's like, it's amazing for me just seeing the whole design process. Like it starts off because the first time we met, I was like, cool. Like he's going to do the design. I'm going to see like the whole house. house it's yeah. going to be like, awesome. You know, the house is done. It's ready. Uh, but it's, it's really not like there's the initial like drawings and yeah, there's a know, whole ex, process. There's, yeah, there's like, it's really not just a, Slap bam, like here you go. It's, yeah, it's, here's, a, here's your plans. There's a picture, like, and that's what I thought. House, you know, yeah. obviously, I, I didn't, obviously, I didn't really have knowledge of architecture and stuff, but it's just really cool to see that. That fascinated me more than actually seeing, like, not really the design did fascinate, fascinate me, but the whole process behind it was really cool. Yeah. Um, unexpected almost. Yes, definitely. A lot of people know that from a young age they want to do certain thing or, some people don't know from a young age they want to do certain things. Was architecture something you knew from a young age that you wanted to do? Um, yeah, not not quite from the beginning. Like I've, I've always had a like a strong interest in creating things. So I'd say like my earliest memory that we can take back to like an architectural side would be Lego. Oh, like, nice. Uh, <laughs> loved Lego. Um I understand now why my parents didn't buy me as much as I wanted. It's quite expensive. Yeah. Like now when you're paying for it yourself. Uh, so yeah, Lego, I was always creating things, creating like random structures at a stage and then eventually found myself actually like designing layouts of floor plans and, you know, just the house in general. Um, the house I grew up in, our, our family home, my, my dad actually designed Oh, I think wow, that's, that's crazy. In, you know, like, that's so directly, cool. like, sparked something as well. Not that you take it in or that's, like, a driving force in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but I think that's where, like, seeds are planted along the way. 
And yeah, of course, definitely. Yeah, so then I've always had an interest in that. And yeah, funny enough, architecture was probably like my third choice in, in things <laughs> because uh, at, at a stage I got roped into the golf life and was trying to pursue like a professional career in golf at a stage. Yeah. That didn't work out. So then uh, I had a passion for golf was like my biggest passion actually. And um, initially I actually enrolled to to do landscape architecture with like naive notions that one day someone's going to allow me to build, you know, design a golf course. And uh, <laughs> You never know, it might still happen. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, <laughs> that ship sailed. Um, so th- luckily enough, um, at the time I was quite bleak, but I didn't actually, I didn't, um, they didn't accept me into that. And my, oh, second, okay. my second choice was the architecture. So I was I was like, I was happy about that, but it wasn't my first choice. And uh, yeah, it's it's funny, or there's a, it's quite a lot of irony there because you think you go in a certain direction, yeah, you get a, you get another direction, and then you look back, and twelve years later, you like you can't imagine anything else. Yes, yeah, you basically this is this is where you want to be. Yeah, you wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else. Exactly. Yeah, love what I do now. So thank goodness for whoever rejected me. <laughs> yeah, we need to thank that person wherever you are, whoever you are. Thank you so much Ex- for the rejecting, Nikki. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> Rejection is good sometimes. It is. No, it is. It really is. It also teaches you. I mean, uh, this is the lesson. If you think about it, that rejection brought you here. So well, yeah. That's quite cool. That's really cool. Um. So now moving on to, obviously, this is a passion of yours. This is something you love doing. Is there any other creative hobbies or passions that you have? I think the Lego thing is still stuck in me. Like uh, <laughs> I recently just bought a few, uh, like the little Ferrari edition. Oh, okay, cool. The gauntlet from Marvel. Oh, wow, like that's awesome. Yeah. Stage, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that 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 part I still do. But I think uh, if I'm like, you know, if I'm really honest, it's like the creative side and stuff like you, you're doing this on a daily basis, every day yeah. in and out. Like sometimes it's just good to... Just not like do have anything a, creative. Exactly, have you a break from it. So <laughs> I find myself, uh, if I'm not uh, looking after the little, the little ones, it's like if I can get on a golf course, awesome. Um, otherwise, yeah, no no real crazy or like yeah. autistic stuff outside of that. I just just want to find like a, yeah, a break yeah. from it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you can't always be stuck in a creative loop and then <laughs> when it comes to designing and actually designing houses you're gonna that's where the creative creativity needs to yeah, be that's where i need to like focus it on yeah no that makes a lot of sense oh well, if you even think about it this might sound a bit weird but golf is kind of creative in a sense well, no, uh, well when you're playing badly even more so you yes, find yeah. yourself in random, <laughs> random spots on the golf I mean, course uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to decide am i gonna fade this one am i gonna you know it's uh, i guess that's yeah i wouldn't say it's creative but it's it's more of a Strategy. It's it's strategy. Yeah, it's more strategy. Yeah, uh, it's more strategy. That that's actually probably now that you mentioned the word strategy. Like, if there was anything that actually, um, you know, from like a like a form of art that I really got roped into as as like a, from when I was like a junior was, I mean, it is a form of art, but it's like video gaming. Oh, because like, yeah. you mentioned strategy, and now all I'm thinking <laughs> of is Age of Empires. <laughs> all the, the little nerd, the nerdy part of me is coming out, and like I love that part. Like that's that whole like um, different reality, like mm. being stuck in a game playing, yeah. you know, Starcraft or whatever, like Tomb Raider. That if you that is an art form. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, yeah and definitely. Uh, like that's that was. Uh, Got stuck into that at the stage wasn't very healthy. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't worry. I mean, I think I can can relate, relate. to you know, with you on that one because I think I've spent. So, uh, there was this one game called Skyrim. I don't know if you've heard of it. I have heard of it. Skyrim. Never. Oh my lord! Yeah, so there was also like spell was. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could become yeah, like yeah. a vampire. You could become a wolf, and yeah, yeah. it just the game was just so intense. I, I kid you not. That game must have taken at least a year of my life yeah like i played so much it, it was unhealthy it was actually unhealthy i played it so much it was just such a cool game yeah, it's yeah. like you could become a vampire or you could you had to become like part of one clan but then at the same time you could go become a werewolf 
and then you could you could learn spells and, spells and, and it's like so many realities uh, all mixed in one. It is, did you ever um, play a game called Sacred? Very very similar. No. Like, so it was uh, what did they call it? Like where you just w- it's like an open world and you can yes, walk around yeah, yeah, do yeah. what. It, so you you dictate like how you want to play the game in that sense, and the same thing. So depending on the things that you found along the map and along the gameplay, like you could put a bracelet on your character and that bracelet, if you decided to put it on, had different characteristics that either made you more oh, evil wow. or okay. like on the good side, or the evil side. And like, it was crazy. I, I played the game back when, you know, we still had like the box the monitors. <laughs> yeah, like just a normal computer, the box uh, oh, yeah, monitor. Okay. Uh, uh, like I can still see it in like vividly in my mind where – Playing in like you know you find yourself this far away from the screen yeah <laughs> and that damn thing blew like the, oh, the screen blew and like geez. the whole back of the wall was just black <laughs> and I was like yo it's not gonna go down with well <laughs> what do I yeah. say now <laughs> it wasn't my fault yeah, like, <laughs> of course you first were the thing one you're thinking it. of is like did I save like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how <laughs> am I gonna get how am I gonna get back there <laughs> when, when am I gonna get a new monitor how long am I gonna have to wait without yeah gaming? that was always the thing I remember when I had the PlayStation, at the time, I don't know why, but my parents wouldn't buy me a memory card or something. So I had to play my games from the beginning to end in a day. Mm. Wrestling, I played it. It was like almost the only game I had. I didn't have any other games. Wrestling, I played every single Sunday, start to finish. Hectic. But anyway, yeah, that's yeah. another story. Back to back to the art. Um, so you could say basically your first experience with art was, when was it actually? Well, you could say maybe with the Lego. Yeah, I think it, it was that that in the video game in, in yeah. like, it's not art per se. I've actually never, I don't see myself as, you know, there's a, like an, there's a perception in our industry that as an architect, like, I just quickly sketch me up what you think this is going to look like. And yeah. That's not my strong point. You know, uh, every, yeah. every architect's got a different way of designing and different strengths, like, so pen to paper, like, don't ask me to sketch anything. So yeah, I, yeah. artistically, I've never been good at that. But I've always had, like, I can, from a 3D perspective, and I think I get that from the game, from the gaming years, yes. from physically building blocks with the yeah, Lego yeah. and stuff over all those years. Like, that I think is where, if you want to call any form of, like, artistic attributes that I've got, I got it from... Those, those, those elements. And that's yeah. why even I can't, my, you know, one of my weaknesses as an architect isn't, is, is because I can't take what I can see in my head and, and like jot it down quickly. Initially sketch it out. Like, yeah. And to your point earlier where you thought, you know, like the first time we met um, when we designed the house, like, you know, everything would be there. But there's like steps along the way. And then yes. Now, now with the aid of like three um, D programs and stuff, it makes it a lot easier for someone like myself to bring those like ideas forward and actually present it to someone else, so they can actually get an idea of what I have in mind. Yeah. So now, a couple of years ago, when three D programs and stuff weren't really popular, how did you do it? I'm, I'm sure they've yeah. always been popular, though. Like three D programs have been around for what, ages. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. So there has, but there's been like a big like advanced leap in terms of like, you know, whatever 3D program looked like when I started studying compared to what is out there now. It's like not yeah, It's day. probably like two worlds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the one looks like a sketch. Yeah. <laughs> and now like now you get like, you know, realistic images and stuff. So, you know, and that's just going to continue because. Yeah, it's just going to get better and better, better and better. better, and better. And better. There's a whole there's a whole industry that's reliant on that kind of software. So, you know, yeah. you're talking movies, video games, the the build industry when it comes to architects and designers, interior designers, any, um, even like your, you know, like your graphic designers, it's all very reliant nowadays on like the software. So, mm. you know, in Yeah, I mean, time just in general, like, if you think about everyday lives, it's, it's, it's all everywhere. just a bunch of software that, <laughs> it's the matrix of software that we're living in. Exactly, and it's actually and, crazy. And uh, that like that whole sector is even getting more co- like with crypto and oh wow, and uh, all this you know metaverse stuff. So it's getting more interesting. Yes, yeah. So now tell me, what's your favorite part of your process? Your let's just say your design process. What's your favorite part? So 
it might sound cliche and whatever, like, but the the biggest the biggest joy in fact that we get like well I get out like when when designing something is it's like the challenge part of it because nobody approaches us to design their house to get a replica house that they've seen. Yes, also. of course, yeah. But they've seen <laughs> they've obviously approached us because they like our style and they've they've maybe seen something we've done before. So yeah, there's there's the the element of they approaching you because they like what you want. They like your style, yes, okay. Yes, yes. But they don't want the same thing. Of course, yeah. You it's don't like want to have the same house as your whatever. Like for example, my I got I was referred to you by my brother. Yeah, and I didn't come to you and say. Please design the exact same house. Exactly. Yeah. Just, you know, and it's the same thing as like an artist that maybe does painting. Yes, you know, You know that, that you like his style. You you trust that he's going to give you something that you want, but you don't want the exact, the exact same, same thing. Yes, of course, yeah. So from an architectural side, every time a client comes and they give us our brief, it's like the biggest challenge and the big, biggest reward at the end of it is – Taking that brief, interpreting it with the know-how that we have, trying to trying to like get in the client's mind and understand yes, exactly yes. what it is that yeah. they see because they they don't have the tools to to necessarily describe it to us properly or to draw it up quickly or anything. Yes, so yeah, yeah. when we take that, you know, when we start in a, a design like that first, you know, first day or two that you do in the design is like the probably the most interesting because no one can gauge what it is you're actually doing yeah. because you, you, it's like you organized busy, chaos, organized <laughs> chaos. Like you, you've got an idea in your head and you, you always reverting back to the client and trying to interpret what it is that they describe to you as the brief. And you put, you, you know, you're like pushing things here and you're playing around with this idea and you might stick on that idea for two, three hours and realize this isn't, this isn't quite working with another part of the house. So then you scrap that yeah. idea and there's like this whole back and forth exercise and, I think that challenge is what excites me because okay. no no design like will ever be the same. No other architect that took the same description brief from a client. Oh, they wouldn't even design it the they same. They wouldn't even de- design it the same. So like it's this constant challenge of like, okay, well, let's see what I can create. And then when, when it works out and like you step back and you go, okay, I think Damn, this, yeah, this well ticks done. all the boxes. <laughs> like, and then, then you kind of like, okay, cool. Like, and then, then the excitement just rolls over because then you just, whether it's another project or continuing developing that design, you just want to kind of see like, because everything's yeah. like unlimited. Like obviously there's budgets and stuff involved, but your yes, creative course, juices, yeah. you're, trying to, you're trying to make the most of what's been given to you. Yes, definitely. Whether it's budget, sites, demographics and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay. So the challenge <coughs> is what excites you. Yeah, 100%. Like. Yeah. There's no better reward like for what I do than knowing that, like by the time the clients moved in, they can't like imagine the house being anything else. But yes, they're they completely. I think you also like. <coughs> I think from what I what I get from it is also the kind of the reaction from the clients. Yeah. Once that design is like approved and they're like, yes, I really like it. I love it. X, Y, and Z. I think that must also be really like satisfying for you. Hundred percent. And like. Uh, you know, like that reignites, like if you could have like a rough two, three weeks and yes, you get yeah. that and you're just like, cool, when's Let's the next go. design? Like, where's the next one Let coming Let me design from? your house. Let me yeah. design your house. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's getting a design. Free, free house design. It's like, who wants one? Um, so, yeah, and I, and I think like any, like most things in life, like if you're not doing it on a day to day, then people that don't do that don't really have an idea of like, how complicated or you know comp- yes, complex yeah. it could be, and mm. and it's always interesting to hear like clients once they've gone through that experience and they actually like actually get to know what what it, what it entails to design a house. Like, there's so many moving parts. Yes, yeah, and there's so many factors. So you know, like everything, like one one idea might sound great, but it might be completely throwing the rest of the house out. So like, what do yeah. you do there? There's, yeah. It's Even just like, I, I realized it from when we work together, well, not together, but um, that idea that I had for the glass that I wanted to separate, I think it was like a, a garage from like a, a like the little, like yeah, the little work, cave yeah, area, work area. Cave. 
we actually couldn't do that because of the laws in SA. The glass has to have that. Yeah, it's a certain it? like a uh, fire rating. Yes. So you yeah. can do that, but then, you know, it's always an option, but you would be paying ridiculous amounts of money, especially with the, the amount of glass that, that we were considering. You know, like most people would look at the, the bill for the, just that glass. And and be say like, like, no, like, thanks. No, it's okay. No, exactly. <laughs> Take the glass off. I don't like <laughs> exactly. that. I hate that idea, actually. And, and that's where some of the challenge lies is yeah. if we use that as an example. If, if a client is completely sold that that is what they want. Once, yeah. You've got to make you, it happen. You've got to make it happen. And you also need then to bring the expertise and you need to know how to manage them per se to say like, look, we can do that. But just know that this is this is the ripple effect. Like it's going to cost you this it, much, this much, that much. Is it really need worth this it? This person on site or whatever, yeah. And then, and then the whole problem solving, because that's that's a lot of what we do as architects, whether it's during the design phase on site, you always you always dealing with a problem. Like so, from yeah, the design yeah. sense. So, okay, so if this is an obstacle and we don't have the glass, what 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 other means do we have to yes, give yeah. you what you want? Mm. Like, and then you just try to find different ways. Um, Different yeah. positioning, different partitioning, yeah. So, yeah, it's basically a problem solver that has a bit of a, a creative eye as well. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> creative, <Try to. laughs> creative problem solver. Well, I mean, I, I don't think you would be you would be here today with quite a few clients under your belt if if you weren't. So, yeah. well, give yourself a pat on the back at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always say, if you're not if you're not your own biggest fan, then who else is going to be your biggest fan? Hopefully, my mom. Yeah, no, but your mom's always gonna be off. <laughs> Our mom, like your mom, always. Yeah, that's Especially a bias Portuguese fan. moms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Portuguese moms oh, are like, feel, there's no oh, ways. Oh, My son, he's the best thing on earth. But no matter uh, what you say, I don't think I've heard that from a mom. But uh, I think yeah. she feels it though. <laughs> she feels it. We always have the debate at home: um, who my mom loves the most. most. Always have that. And she's like, I love all my kids. The We're same. like, no, but you know you love me the most. You know, you, you definitely love me the most. Um, uh, anyway, moving on. So one thing that I was I was so shocked when you guys posted this on your Instagram page. I mean, if you guys don't know uh, the Instagram page, it's Footprint Architects, correct? Is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Footprint Arc, could, the, the handle. Yes. What is your handle so people can go search you? I think it's footprint arc. I'm gonna have to check this no, out. Go for it. I mean, this is uh, <laughs> yeah. So you guys need to check out the page. But anyway, as I was saying, I was so shocked when I saw this. You guys are in the process of doing an a NFT, if I'm not mistaken. Y yeah, yeah. yeah. We um, it is footprint architects, by the way. Okay, footprint architects. architects. Check them out on Instagram. You guys will enjoy their page if you're into architecture. Oh, if you're just into pretty houses, who's not into a pretty house? Come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the NFT, yeah, very cool. It's like some, you know, for the last 10, 12 years, we, you're so used to doing similar projects. You know, it's residential. Every now and then it might yeah. be a retail. And then recently we got approached to design um, NFTs on like a, from a housing perspective. So like visuals of a house and – it took me at least 20, 30 minutes during that meeting to just comprehend exactly what it is they were asking for. Because <laughs> I was like, guys, <laughs> I'm like, if you want a house, but it's got to change layers, but it'll still be the house and it's part of a series. And yeah, it took me a while to to grasp that, you know, because something new like that, you also want to make sure that you, you're understanding it. Yes, so that the, yes. The, out, the output that you give is like exactly what was expected. And so... Yeah, we got we got asked to do that, and that's been cool because it's a completely, you know, like architectural architecture aside. There's there's no constraints in terms of yeah, you can do it. It's NFT. I mean, it's, it's a it's the digital space. So exactly, there's so, no rules. You no, know, I'm just like so. What does these houses, you know, look like? And they just, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> if you think it looks cool, uh, it would, there's obviously different categories that they wanted to. There's like a series of houses that they wanted that. that that they've wanted to like um, mint. Okay. That's the term that they yeah, use. Minting, so yes, I'm learning, yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> um, so like one would be more on the luxury houses, the others like more coastal apartments, the other ones like super futuristic and stuff. So okay. each one of those has been 
like challenging but also like super exciting because you're designing this this perspective of this house and you're not for for the first time ever in our like in our field you're not worried about gravity and structures and how this thing can stay up and (laughs) you know is this isn't is this like feasible yes yeah so is it going to fit in budgets? Exactly. <laughs> can so you put glass in this <laughs> one? Yeah, you can put glass exactly. in it now. <laughs> so that was, yeah, very cool, very different. Um, still early days. I think it's it's been probably like two months now. So okay. we've, um, we it's part of Zara City. So if the okay. guys want to go check it out, it's called Zara City. So it's like a new, it's like a metaverse version that a whole bunch of South African developers are, like, you know, developing, developing and, okay. and, and putting a whole bunch of different brands and different fields um, together to create this city. So uh, super excited to be part of that. Like yeah, that's really cool. When I saw that, I was like, wow, this is this is insane. Because also NFTs have fascinated me for many different reasons. I mean, for one, it's the digital art space. That's kind of where we're moving towards. Even though I'm a, I'm, I'm a purist, I love seeing like art in person. I love looking at it in person, yeah. but I, I'm not stupid and I, I know that's where we're going, you know? Yeah, um, the VR yes, headset. Yeah. And exactly, exactly. So two, I mean, people are making ridiculous amounts of money off in, in, in NFTs nowadays. It's actually insane. Yeah. Um. So it's, it's just really, it's an interesting space to kind of research and just... Yeah, and be involved in like... I think, yeah, from your side as well, yeah. being actually involved, involved. in creating... Especially like in, the, in these beginning days because yes, yeah. like I'm quite naive and don't really have the insight of that space yet. But, you know, assuming it takes off and in 20 years time, everyone looks back at this like this early stage of like NFTs and metaverses and stuff. You know, you'll you look there. back and you're like, yeah, oh, I was there. I was like part of that. That was me. That, that was me. Like that house will never work in real, the real world. Yes. But it's <laughs> but pretty cool, it. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, can tell your, you can tell your kids there and be like, yeah, I see your dad's cool. I designed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually crazy. That yeah. was really cool. I, I, I thought that was really cool, especially from an architectural, you know, point of view, because I feel like people have this, you ask people, you know, describe an artist. They'd probably say a painter, a painter, a musician, X, Y, and Z, and they forget about every other type art of form. art that is out there. So for me, that was kind of cool. It just brought more of the the art into the architecture yeah. because, as you said, those houses are not going to work in the real world, so you could get really creative, creative. With, with it, Yeah, which is, for me, that was really cool because then you can really see, like, okay, the, geez, like this okay. house is insane. insane yeah. I mean, it's actually, we need to pull up photos it, it would, would it be is, okay with could we do that yeah yeah it's actually i think they they are one or two yes i saw on the on, page yeah. we, mm. we haven't you know those are like the drafts because obviously every actual nft is is one of a kind and yes, obviously yes. on the other platform so what's on the instagram page is is just one example of how it could be deprived because you know these nfts they're all about different layers and stuff. yes yeah so the, the sky on the one will never be the same exactly. as the sky on the other. And there's it's a whole all bunch interchangeable, of all, yeah. all interchangeable. So we do have one or two examples on the, on our Instagram page. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, play. there you go. Once again, why well, I said it's so important about the Instagram page, you guys can see the NFT and it's quite cool to see because it's like you said, it's early days. It's, it's South Africa's probably first city. I'm, I'm assuming city? so. I'm assuming a, so as well. I'm a, like again, so, so naive with that, like, field and spectrum but if it, if it's not if it's not one of the first it's probably if not the biggest at the moment like in terms of yeah. the, the people that are behind it and and driving it forward mm. okay so go check it out guys cool. and then um so in terms of architecture and different architects do you have a favorite architect and why or do you or just art in general do you have uh, a favorite artist or painter um, yeah so look uh, from a from an architectural side definitely um Stefan Stefan Anthony they also okay. known as Sayota Sayota okay yeah. and um yeah they they their work from an architectural thing just not just for myself I'd say you know anyone that looks at their work would be like okay so, you know, <laughs> we we understand now. we understand <laughs> and they they probably obviously everyone's got their own opinion and stuff but in my books, like by far the, the leading architects in the country. 
Okay, um, so they're local as well. Local, which yeah, is quite lo- cool. local, yeah. So that, that's what I think you know. You, you see more of their content. You can relate more to them being local and stuff. And, yes. Um, so definitely love their stuff. And on an international scale, is there is there one is there anybody that's above them? You know what I mean? Like an all time, like great. Like for my for example, myself, um, Shepherd Fairy. Like if I had to see him in real life, I'd probably faint. So. <laughs> That's like my. <laughs> that's your level. Yeah, that's my level. Um, so Zaha, Zaha, I did. Like, trying to say that clearly. Um, so again, their 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 her practice. Uh, she's passed away now, but like their oh. practice from an international perspective is like insane, insane stuff. <laughs> you know, they, they do the stuff where you go like, and they should be an NFT because it probably can't stand, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so. They really push the boundaries. Really push stuff. the boundaries. But, um, don't you know, there's no one no one that sticks out per se, like from an international. Like, if anything, I'm actually following a lot more of the local guys. Like. Yeah. The Seyotas, um There's another there's another company that uh, they call uh, Block Architects. Love their stuff. So, you know, they all – competitors but they're in like a different league so you know i don't mind yeah yeah you know mentioning them because if i can get to that level like yeah that's it's almost like you like they say baby be, steps yeah, you know? you aspire to, be, to, to, to get to their level so um that that from an architectural side like that's the the people I like look up to or have interest in um in terms of art like and this can be anything <coughs> in terms it can be a musician it can be a painter uh, art per se like i'm um, yeah i don't really have like a fixed passion on something you know like okay that's what you mean yeah when i when we met and stuff and um the block block bears what's brick bears yeah bear bricks bear, bear bricks. bricks okay bear bricks. there we go yeah. i'll get it right eventually <laughs> like everybody gets it wrong don't worry yeah so <laughs> like i could see like when you're talking about that like you know that's something that kind of art form and stuff, like I could see you're like super passionate yes, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, even though I'm I'm an architect and I think I have autistic attributes and stuff. Yeah, I'm not like super into other artworks. Like, I, I really do like the the fantasy genres. So whether that's gaming, okay. movies. So if there's like a art art form of a source of a sense that like I kind of follow it's like the fantasy kind of thing so but yeah. that's not that's not just so you could say to like one maybe the your favorite director of one of those yeah movies so the, or something like that so like yeah. Lord of the Rings was like a standout yes. where you know like when that series now launched a couple of weeks ago you know like you kind of lose sleep because <laughs> you're like it's been years since I watched the last movie like yeah what is the series going to be about so you know, I've, I think I've always appreciated the, that kind of art, like the the you know the visual side of mm. of another yes. of another uh, like I don't want to say like universe, but like another well, world. Technically, yeah, yeah so another like universe, Ava- another Avatar, world, yeah. another, oh, another yeah, kind of Avatar was that movie. You know, insane. like I watch those movies and then like I'm immediately I'm like if it's Lord of the Rings, I'm like cool. Let me be a like an elf. <laughs> I'm give ready. Me, <laughs> give me a sword. Yeah, <laughs> sign me uh, up. Sign me up. Okay, so that's um, really cool. So the fantasy world, the fantasy, I guess fantasy is just like, ex- like, and it is for me. I'll agree with you a hundred percent. So if you really want to watch a movie, that's super creative and super just stimulating it's 99 percent always a fantasy movie um avatar even if you think about something like transformers that is that's completely yeah like it's out there <laughs> when are you going to see a card no exactly, it's not going to happen exactly. so and those are always the best movies to watch i mean yeah. avatar i'm sure all three of us in this room can agree that avatar was an insane movie. Movie, hundred percent. And number two, I think. Yeah, I was about to say, you excited December. for yeah, the next yeah. one. I think it's December. December around there. I think Avatar two comes out. Yeah, so I've always appreciated that because, even from an artistic, like if you think of the imagination that has to go behind oh, those yeah. people that are like creating those different worlds and that's insane. The authors of like the book, uh, the Lord of the Rings and stuff, like definitely, yeah. You have to be super out there, like. Yeah, you have to be high. <laughs> have to be on some other drugs. Yeah, we should be high now. <laughs> yeah, we should actually. This is not Joe Rogan's podcast, unfortunately. I mean, but you could. I mean, yeah, it's legal in SA. So I mean, well, obviously not in this building, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, we're moving towards that. That's also one thing that's happening in South Africa that's... Yeah. That might help some of my designs. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. <laughs> I think it will help a lot of people with a lot of things, actually. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's really cool. I, I, I must agree with you. The fantasy genre is really artistically Inclined, stimulating yeah. and, and pleasing to watch. It's, it's really cool. So, oh, it's cool to know. Um, okay, and last but not least... So as everyone knows, I love burgers. We we always <laughs> every guest we have to. It's just it's just it's it's not not it's never going to change. What did you think about the burgers we ate at? I think it was Bento today. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, I'll let you start. You go. I give it a seven point two. Seven point two. Yeah? Want to get very specific? <laughs> That's <Okay>. very specific. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. It was good. Like I'm more interested about your passion with burgers more than anything else. I don't really know where it stems do from. View, do the viewers know? Like, oh yes, I think oh, okay. everyone knows. Even if you don't know me, you know I love burgers. Okay. I don't know what it is. It's very hard for me to explain, but I think it's just an easy meal, and it's always really flavor. Like it's full of flavor. You know what I mean? I don't know. For me, my from my side, so, yeah. it's just a it's a meal that I can eat. I've eaten in one day. I had steers, I think, three times: <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and I had, I love that. I don't get sick of it. You know, how, like people yeah, yeah, eat yeah. food, and you like after a while you get sick of it. I don't get sick of it. I don't know what it is. I guess it's also because I work in and I I, I work in meat every day, and I understand that. Like you can really get shit patties. Like if you want, I can yeah, I can yeah, really yeah. make you like a really <laughs> crap patty. So when you so have it's a, a burger, like a horse, <laughs> worse actually. Okay. So when you have a really good one, I think people also underestimate that. that in my honest opinion, it is an art form. You know, um, dealing, handling, the- handling the meat, and actually making a good hamburger patty. It takes you have to know how to do it. You can't just be like, I'm going to take some mince. And I'm just going to squash it and, and yeah, cool. I've got that, you know? So, I mean, there's some people that even say that um, brisket fat is better for patties and this and that. So, I mean, we're not going to get into that, that. <laughs> but uh, that I do every day of my life. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, you know, all the details. <laughs> yeah. That. So, um, and if there was a standout burger for you, a standout burger for me, there was this place that closed down. No, that's that's not it's a good start to the no, story. <laughs> it's such I was so sad. That day I was so sad. Um it was still back in my varsity days. I still took friends in. Even they were like, Whoa, this burger is insane. Same. It was called Burger Burger Shack or Burger Rack or something. Yeah. Uh in Honeydew. It was a small little shop. It, it was like it was very hard to explain. It it didn't seem like it was busy, but then there were days that it would just be insane. It was like an old man that used to run it. Uh, so okay. I don't know if he closed it, like he retired and he just closed up shop. And hopefully he, that and hopefully pass away. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> I mean, if he did, he made really great burgers and rest in peace. Yeah. Um, that place for me was just next level. Uh, every burger I had from that place was really good. They made a 400 gram Jeez, burger. It's, it's like twice the size of a typical one, hey? yeah. Yeah, easy. Maybe even I think most of them are like one fifty. Oh yeah, 150. more or less. So mm. good. That was because you know a lot of like road houses they make really big burgers, but yeah, I like don't want to b- bash. B- big isn't necessarily better. Yes, yeah. I don't want to bash road houses because some of their food is really good, but a lot of them just they're not. You can see they're made with cheap ingredients, and that bur- that place made. This okay. huge burger, and it was so nice. You could see it was like actual meat. It wasn't just like this random patty that they yeah. bought from a shop. There was a lot of passion. I guess I'm that type of person. I like people, and I can relate to people that have passion about something. And you can see this old man was just passionate, passionate about his about little it. burger shop. I That's think awesome. that basically could be that could be me in like a couple of years' time. <laughs> when an old man, I'd love to open up a burger shop. How did this all start? From <laughs> yeah. From talking about it on my podcast, like, yeah, like, I've actually thought of making like I wanna, I wanna make my own patty. 
I'm still busy working on it and I want to get like the right spice and okay. like I want to change it up. Well, I want to make my own patties. You're also in the, you're involved in I'm the in right the meat indus- industry. Yeah, so. yeah to do, do, do that. So. Yeah. so that's, I guess, that's where my passion for burgers come. Um, so, yeah. That's very cool. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, you could say maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I love them. But anyway, so I give the burger, uh, I'd say also, I'd say about an A, it's round about there. It was, yeah. it was an all round Good burger. It's a nice patty. You can taste it's a quality patty. Yeah. Um, there's the stuff they call MDM. You can taste when people put that in and it's not nice. Not great. You'll taste it straight away. It's not Sounds nice. like a drug. It sounds like it should be tasting good. Like <laughs> no, <MDM. laughs> I think it is. I think they might put some things in there that are drugs. Uh, but yeah, that, that burger was good. Uh, I think the only problem I have with burgers now is that the whole market's just becoming saturated. There's a burger joint everywhere. everywhere. Well, and, yeah. like even when we when we were having those burgers, I was like, I've never heard of these guys. So, just exactly. shows you, yeah, to your point, but yeah, it was a good burger. I enjoyed it, and yeah, this is the end of the episode. Cool. So it's gone by quicker than like you like you expect. You like, geez, what are we going to talk about? And yeah, it flies. I mean, yeah. it flies by. As I say, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, just real quick, I need to step out of frame for two seconds. I have a little thank you for you, part of the thank you. Okay. Uh, so give me one second. Cool. Anticipation. So yeah, this is just like uh, so. Wait, so I got so excited. I was like, everybody can hear me already. <laughs> one second, yeah. one second, one second. Um, yeah, this is just part of a little thank you. I'm sorry that I didn't have the whole thing here. Uh, there's more to it, but my yeah. printer let me down. Craig, Splash Designs, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting us down. No, no, he still he pulled through. He got. He literally did this this morning. I picked this up at like. Half past seven this morning. Oh, hectic. <laughs> yeah, okay. he got so in you, early. You had a bit of a day. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks this is easy. Like, we just come here, yeah. we just talk, and it's like, this was all set up already. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. So, yeah, yeah, this is part of the thank you. The rest of it will be coming soon. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you very much. Jeez, this is proper legit, eh? Yeah, well, I try. And you spelled my name right, which is a first. Like, that, that never happens. At so. least I got that right. Thanks. Yeah. It was awesome. I really, I enjoyed it. I, I was uh, I was obviously a little bit nervous. Sort of never don't worry, me before, too. <laughs> but uh, it was a very cool experience, yeah. Yeah, something different. I mean, don't worry. I, like I said, I was, I get nervous pretty much before all of these. The first time when I initially started, it was so hard for me to record an episode. And I was sitting in my like my room by myself. Yeah, like you should you, you should be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really like it's intimidating, but I also think it's a thing of because you're kind of putting yourself out there and you don't know how people are going to respond to it. And then once you get over that, and you're just like, you know what? It's all good. Beep you guys. I'm yeah. doing I'm doing this because I enjoy it. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's, it's your experience that. just as much as theirs. Exactly, know? exactly. So once I got over that, I got comfortable. So, but even today, I'll be dead honest. There was moments I think even Katie saw it. He was like. Are you good? And I was like, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm chilled, I'm chilled. They're like, oh, this is, I'm used to this. Yeah, but yeah. even I get nervous, to yeah. be dead honest, I get nervous. Well, it was cool. I think it went well. It, was it did, yeah, no, I enjoyed it as well. I, like I get, like I said, again, thank you very much. You'll be surprised how many people just like say, yeah, yeah, let's do it. This is awesome. And then just, don't just commit. disappear. And so thank you, because cool. it, it really does mean a lot to me. As like I said to you, I know this really probably won't really add much value to your brand and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, thank you. I really yeah. do appreciate it. No, it wasn't about that at all. So it's, it's good to see another artistic uh, perspective on things and just yeah. chat about stuff. So I enjoyed it. It was cool. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, guys. And thank you for everybody watching. Please go follow Nikki um, and his business on Instagram. Please follow the Creative Blockman podcast. Follow us on Instagram as well. Now follow us on YouTube. And yeah, welcome to season two episode well episode one of the art of things you could say it falls part of season two as well thanks for tuning in bye <laughs> cheers thanks buddy it was awesome, awesome. it was Thank very you, cool Nikki.